Welcome to Creepin' It Real. I am Judah. Let's talk about the 1987 cult classic Blood Diner. Now, let's just be honest with each other. One horror fan to another. Cult classic, all that really means is when it first came out, everybody thought it was dog crap. But then, after a long enough time, the few weirdos that did like the movie found each other. And they said, hey, look, some of us do like this movie. Let's call it a cult classic. So I have not seen this trailer yet. So we're going to watch this together. Ah, hello, fellow food lovers. I'm Phil Mignon, world famous gourmet. In my travels, I've sampled some of the most exquisite foods the world has to offer. And that's why they've asked me to tell you all about a charming new eatery located right downtown. Okay, already I'm kind of, uh, I dig the way that they were trying to promote this movie. Because that whole thing that just occurred was not in the movie. So they're they're definitely trying to portray this like there is a real diner out there. So I, I, I find that kind of fun. As um, you can see, the atmosphere is lovely. <laughs> but of course, the uh, finest attribute of this quaint cafe is the marvelous cuisine. <laughs> By the way, what is a special ingredient in the Tuesday surprise? Well, if I told you that, it wouldn't be a surprise anymore, would it? They're uh, <clears throat> mouth-watering specialties. <laughs> will have you, as they say, licking your lips. Uh, only the freshest natural ingredients are selected. The first ingredients we need are two stomachs from a couple of tramps for use in their carefully guarded <clears throat> recipes. I'd give my right arm for that secret recipe. Ah! Uh, yes, the chef puts a bit of him. I did want to mention that there is, there's definitely um, a bit of a <sighs> Plankton and Mr. Crab kind of a thing going on in this movie. It's like a subplot. This guy would essentially be Plankton and the, the brain in the jar would be Mr. Crab. There's definitely a, a little bit of this going on. It was kind of funny. Give my right arm for that secret recipe. Ah! Uh, yes, the chef puts a bit of himself into every succulent dish. Oh, and he's always pleased to serve you to your friend. Uh, sh shouldn't that be serve you and your friends? Uh, no. Uh, your gracious hostess will direct you to your table. Where you will dine as if there's no tomorrow. So, breeze on down and don't let anything stand in your way. Oh, uh, this Epicurean haven is called... Okay. This scene right here. Any stand in your way. It had nothing to do with the plot of the movie. This dude was in his van. He sees this, this biker on the side of the road who needs help. The dude in the van's like, oh, I'm just going to run him over. He runs him over. And he's super pleased with himself. And he looks in his rear view mirror, sees the guy still moving. He's like, what the heck? And he backs up and runs him over again. It doesn't end there. This goes on for like five minutes of him just running him over, backing up, running him over, backing him up, running. It just went on and on and on. It, it again, it had nothing to do with the plot. It didn't move anything forward. It was just some weird bit to throw in this movie. Finish up this trailer. Oh, uh, this Epicurean haven is called Blood Diner. You got that right, homo. So, this is Phil Mignon, ah, saying, Bon Appetit. Oh, mommy. The Blood Diner. First. Let me give you the uh, synopsis here. 
This is from IMDb. This says the storyline. Two cannibals slash health food diner owners, which that was so weird to me. And I'm not sure if uh, the writer and the director just thought it was really hilarious, the idea of somebody being a cannibal, but the restaurant that they owned being a vegetarian. But they were sneaking the people that they killed into the vegetarian food. And then you got all these vegetarians coming and eating this food and they're like, wow, this is, this is good stuff. What's the secret ingredients? <laughs> it's people. <laughs> uh, two cannibals, health food diner owners, are on a wacky quest to restore life to the five million year old goddess Shitar, aided by their uncle's brain and penis. Now, I definitely saw a brain in this movie. I'm I'm a little taken aback by this whole penis comment. Not to say that penises were not discussed in the movie because they were, but that's a little weird. The, the two set about getting the required parts, virgins, assorted body parts from whores, and ingredients for the blood buffet. The adversaries are the police, the chief with a Russian accent, the player detective, and the New Yorker within an Australian accent. I wanted to talk about this um, New Yorker. Uh, I don't know. Her acting was not great at all. When I was watching it, I definitely felt that her acting was on par with mine. I've, you know, been part of a few sketches and so forth that we videotaped. And I am not an actor. I, I'm just there. It's like... Well, Judas here, let's get him to do it. I, I don't act. I literally just memorize the lines and I just, I just speak them. And that's exactly how this woman delivered her lines. Uh, occasionally she tried to act or emote, but it, it usually just came off that somebody was off screen holding some cards for her to read. And I felt bad, but it, it added to the silliness of this movie. So I guess nothing was really lost. It was on par with the rest of the acting, which was horrible. This was directed by Jackie Kong. This is Jackie. Obviously a female. She's 67 years old right now. So she was quite young when this movie came out. Uh, I think it was her second movie. From what I found online, I think the budget was $330,000. I was not able to find anywhere what the gross was. And like I alluded to at the beginning, it was not well received when it was first released. But then once all the weirdos found each other that liked this movie, then they tagged it with a cult classic. This is how Wikipedia describes its reception. On Rotten Tomatoes, it holds a 57% approval rating from seven reviews. Hmm, seven reviews. The horror review site horrornews.net gave it a positive re review stating that I had a blast watching Blood Diner. It is funny, full of some excellent death scenes, and is just a lot of fun to watch in general. My comments on that. Uh, this movie actually is on par for me with Terrifier. And if you've watched any of our past reviews, you know that I hate Terrifier. But Blood Diner is on the same level as Terrifier for me. Now, when it comes to if you had a gun held to your head, which movie would you watch more or again? I'm going to watch D Blood Diner over Terrifier anytime. Continuing the reception, it says here, in Creature Feature, the movie was given one out of five stars. Yes, one out of five stars. I completely agree. Finding it poorly done... On purpose. With every tasteless gag imaginable included. This person nailed it. Nailed it right there. In the, in the storyline, these guys, <laughs> the brain is telling them that they have to get many, many body, body parts from many disreputable women. So basically whores. Chicks that are loose. And so they, they're getting all these loose chicks, they're chopping them up, and they're stitching together this body um, for Shatar. And this is, this is part of a, uh, a shopping list. Fuck on it. <laughs> this is part of a shopping list that I thought was hilarious. 
Okay, so it, it goes that they are fronting this vegetarian diner just so that they can gather these disreputable women. Uh, they can cut them up, stitch together a body for shatar, and then at the end they need to sacrifice a virgin to her. She must eat this virgin, and at the same time they have to have this blood feast going on which is essentially having a, a large group of people being cannibals and, and eating people, <clears throat> as, as you know a cannibal is. So they somehow connive together this whole uh, party, and they're feeding people. They, they pass it off as like they're getting drugs, but really what it is is it's something that makes you hungry. And so these people are getting super hungry, and they have this big stew there that's obviously got, you know, people as the main ingredient so these people are digging into this stew they're trying to sacrifice this chick you know the shitar comes and as is revived she's there in this body that they stitched together then the police show up all hell breaks loose people are turning into zombies i i'm not really sure how that occurred everybody's getting torn apart people are getting shot i mean it, it's absurd the absurdity of it the virgin girl gets saved at the last minute. This movie um, was not for me. And I mentioned in my The Children review how I'm not into slashers, animal horror, or bad kid horror. I forgot that there was another subgenre that I'm just not into. And it. I, I put it in the same category as slasher. And that is cannibal horror. Cannibal horror doesn't do it for me. And this was definitely a campy slasher cannibal horror movie. Uh, the violence was super over the top. The nudity was over the top. For me, this, this was a nothing. Though there was a, a very silly scene where the older brother hooks up with this chick and he convinces her that they're going to be sexy together and he starts covering her in batter and she's all into it and then he says something like there's just one last place i need to cover darling and he pours batter on her head and then dips her head in a deep fryer which is horrifying because you know that would be a horrible thing to experience the funny thing is when she pop pulls her head out of the deep fryer she has a big hush puppy on her head and she's running around and of course she's she's naked and uh this big hush puppy and the the brother's freaking out and he gets a baseball bat and he hits the hush puppy and her head just goes flying it, it's the absurdity of this what's my rating i'm gonna give this uh, a three out of a ten there's definitely a crowd out there for this, you know, the, the cult classic crowd. Uh, for me, it, it's not great. I might recommend it to somebody just out of the pure insanity of the movie, uh, how absurd over the top everything is, but I'm definitely not going to rewatch this. This isn't something I would keep in my collection. And I would definitely be almost embarrassed if somebody walked in on me watching this, just how gratuitous uh, the nudity and violence is. Obviously, there's people out there who love this movie. I would like for you to reach out and give me your thoughts, give me your opinions, you know, tell me that I'm a bum because I don't like your cult classic. And, and that's fine. We can still be friends because I like movies that other people don't like either. If you got suggestions on something that I should watch, leave a comment. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Have a good day. It's Creeping It Real.